Best and worst of the day. Yeah, I thought I would tee you up to start the best and worst here, Hoger, because, uh, you know, you, when I walked into practice today, it was the hot, the hot sun was beating down. Uh, you know, it was, it was, a, you were, you were hanging close to the right corner of the end zone. And I know that you've got a special best and worst that you want to kick us off with today. Well, my best is uh, something very specific that actually did come up in the press conferences, too. Um, we have seen and we have talked about on the show about the balls getting batted down at the line of scrimmage. And we have discussed you know, how good that is for the defense and how, if we're being honest, probably something that Caleb Williams is going to have to continue to get better at in finding passing lanes. Physically, we know he's more than capable of, you know, changing his arm angles and being accurate on the move and things like that. But there's still little nuances with his eyes, throwing off his toes sometimes, which is something we've seen Russell Wilson do a lot over the years. Or Drew Brees used to do it. You know, he's he's taller than those guys, but we have seen it be an issue where balls are getting batted down the line of scrimmage. So I loved what I believe was the first time they've done this. First time I've seen it in camp and it sounded like it was something they added based on what Matt Eberflew said today where they had basically four equipment staffers on the field in seven on seven. They basically added a defensive line there of staffers holding up those big pads, those long skinny pads up in the air to basically create these really tall obstacles that Caleb Williams had to maneuver to throw what otherwise are his route combinations in seven on seven. I love that. I love seeing that. It tells me the bears are recognizing things that they have to improve on and not afraid to add new things here as we go along. And that's my best, just regardless of what the results of that were, I just love that they did that because it's been a thing and they're trying to get better at it, which is great. Uh, my worst just continues to be, Kind of the list of of names that we're seeing not practicing. Um, I'm going to narrow it down specifically, though, to the right side of the offensive line car. We already know Date, Nate Davis has been out, continues to be out, and um, and now 58. I didn't even see him. Did you see him? I didn't see him at all. I, I, I didn't, and that is not the guy you don't want to see. It's one thing not to see Nate Davis. It's another thing not to see Darnell Wright. So... Yeah, and I just hope this doesn't turn into the excuse to not play Caleb Williams this weekend because Flus has been open and honest about how offensive line uh, attrition will affect playing time in the preseason for the quarterback. And, I mean, we didn't really get an answer on what's going on with Darnell Wright, and I don't really know what's going on there, but hopefully he's back. Because I just I wonder if that might actually influence what we see Saturday in Buffalo. So that's my best and worst of the day, Carm. Yeah, right. Davis, Montez Sweat, Andrew Billings, Tyreek Stevenson, Kyler Gordon not practicing today. Um, so, so it was it was a Jaquan length. Brisker, Br Brisker as well wasn't wasn't doing uh, very much if anything at all. I, yeah, not not good. Um, and this does feel a whole lot like training camp last year right it just uh this is exactly what happened you kind of tiptoed your way in and then guys started getting hurt and then nobody played and i the whole flusis thing with uh you know we'll, we'll see in buffalo it's like dude the guy's got to play if your guys are injured he's got to play with backups in front of him then um don't don't you know don't give him a seven step drop you know do manage it as best you can but my, my best is I'm going to uh underline Colin Johnson I think this guy's going to make the team Hoga maybe I'm going a little too far but he just does he he is a different body type than what they have in that room at six foot six you got a lot of you got a lot of Tyler Scott's and DeAndre Carter's um who just you know don't have the pure size plus this guy's making plays and he you know has played in the NFL before and today caught a ball from Caleb caught a ball from Tyson he's pretty active so I, I'm I'm getting more and more I am Colin Johnson curious if you will and I thought he had another good day out there today so I will make him my best my worst you know outside of the injuries there wasn't a whole lot going out there today so really the injuries is is is, is top of mind but uh, DeAndre Carter spoke to the media today, and I thought he was excellent. He gave a lot of detailed answers, very just transparent. 
Um, but he talked about how, you know, Tory Taylor's punt will play this. We can actually probably play it in a second here. Um, but he talked about Tory Taylor's punting and how, well, it does do a little bit something different. And I just knew that it was underlining Adam Hogue's brilliance. And it started to just creep on me that Carter, I got I, I knew I was going to have to hear from Hogue about what Carter said about Taylor and how this is why he didn't punt the other day. And this is the, this is the beauty of special teams. And five seconds after the press conference ended, Hogue was at his desk telling me about Deandre Carter and Tory Taylor. Weren't you Hogue? Yeah. I mean, I was mainly listening to you say that you wanted to cut it and bring it to the show. So it kind of seems like you're the one who wants to talk about it. Well, I do right now because I thought it was interesting. So Steven, can we play that? Uh, the, he, he was, he was asked about Tory Taylor uh, and what it's like to catch a Taylor punt. I, did you ask that question? I forget. Did you? You must have. Asked I, I did. That. Thanks for paying attention. Yes, yeah, that was my yeah. brilliance. Okay, yeah. so Hogue asked the question, and here, and then uh, we get a we get a drop of Alex Shapiro from NBC Sports Chicago in the middle here to follow up. It's it's a good listen here. DeAndre Carter explaining the brilliance of Tory Taylor. He's got a little bit of a different uh, spin on it than a normal righty, I would say. Uh, a lot of hang time, a real lot, a lot of hang time. Um, I wouldn't say. I mean, it's, look, other than the spin, it's just. I mean, get to the spot and catch the ball. But he's he's gonna be really good, really, really good. What does that spin do to you? Uh, so really, all it is is like as a returner, what a normal righty when the ball turns over, it's gonna fall to my left. Tory has a ball where it looks like it's turning over, but then it's almost like it dies and comes back, spins to the right. Um, so you kind of got to keep your feet moving. It's, once you see it a couple times, like you, you kind of know it's coming. But uh, if you haven't, it, it kind of gets you a guy because you're moving to the left and you got to move to the right at the last minute. So There it is, Carm. Now I got to critique that photo we had up uh, during the interview. If you're watching on YouTube, that was not a clean catch on whatever punt that was. I'm assuming he's returning. So I did, let's, uh, let's, let's get those elbows in. And make sure the ball gets, you know, <laughs> through the hands, so we don't have that happening on game day. Um, but yes, I, I, I'm glad that conversation happened today because it was exactly what I was talking about on the post game show on Saturday night, which is, you know, these, the details you get to in the NFL are are insane, and it can apply to kicks, punts, offensive line, defensive line. It's all the same, like minute details that affect the game so much. And so for a punt returner and for anybody who's trying to be a punt returner, you actually read the spin on the football and can tell like when the nose starts to dive, where that ball's probably going to drop or carry. And in Tory Taylor's punt, uh, case, everyone's been saying it's different. And so essentially it goes a different way than you think it's going to go. That's why I don't think he played. Because you play the Texans in week two and you don't want those returners to get out there and be able, because you heard DeAndre Carter. Once you see it a couple times, you get used to it. But until you're used to it, that could play mind games with you. So I appreciate the detail. I'm sure the Texans appreciate the detail too uh, that DeAndre Carter gave us today. Um, But that's a real thing. And if I'm going to flip my worst into my best right now, maybe... We indeed will see in the regular season teams not used to a Tory Taylor, especially in his rookie season, and the Bears will get some turnovers that perhaps they you know necessarily didn't get in the past. What do you think of that, Hogue? I I think that's what they're banking on. Yeah, I I, I think that's a real thing. Do um, we, and we? Uh, yeah, go ahead. So, um, no, was that? And so that's I'm just confused why that was your worst though. Because it just you got to celebrate being right, and you know it's just it's at oh, some point it gets yeah, a little that does you, suck. you know it just a little gets a little tiring, um, but you know you're you're on fire, and I appreciate the, your brilliance, and and I learn from you every day, so thank you. I, uh, I just didn't really but, I didn't really have a worse the, today's practice is pretty nondescript. Um, yeah. you know. Well, well, we'll get to more details on that here in a second, but um, because I I mainly agree with you. It's kind of uh, we've seen these reset days coming off off days, and that's what today was. Pads will go back on tomorrow. We all silly like the mayor. 